Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today. I am Trace, and this is episode one of five on asteroids and asteroid mining. Make sure you subscribe so you get all of our episodes this week, and you can also check us out on iTunes if you don't want to wait. We put all of the episodes into one and release it there as an audio podcast. If you haven't subscribed there, do that too for us. So this week we're going to talk about what asteroids are and how they got out there. And we're going to talk about how we can go out and grab them, capture them, mine them, and use them to boost our economy back here on Earth and maybe find ways out into deep space. It's going to be really cool, so let's get right to it. Asteroids were first discovered in 1801 when Giuseppe Piazzi was looking at the space between Mars and Jupiter and he found a bright spot. It looked kind of like a star, but it was too close and he eventually realized it was a tiny celestial body. It got the name Ceres. They called it an asteroid, which is Greek for star-like. Asteroids are rocky, irregular shaped objects orbiting in outer space. They can be gigantic, hundreds of miles across, and some are even big enough to give off their own significant gravitational pull. They could also be very tiny, of course, you know, the size of pebbles and small rocks. But asteroids are classified as inactive, they are made of rock, and they orbit the sun. They must also be smaller than a planet. Sometimes they're called minor planets or planetoids. What asteroids are not, however, are comets. They also orbit the sun, but they're not made of rock. They're made of gas and ice and dust. Uh, meteoroids, these are parts of either asteroids or comets that have broken off and are orbiting the sun. They are also not meteors. A meteor is a flash of light emitted when a meteoroid enters our atmosphere and then burns up. It's just a light doesn't actually have a physical thing. And then there's a meteorite, which is whatever part of a meteoroid that doesn't burn up and might reach the ground here on our planet. There's also a dwarf planet that is not an asteroid. Ceres used to be considered an asteroid. Now it fits the definition of a dwarf planet. Ceres is 600 miles across, and though it does exist in the asteroid belt, it is not an asteroid. Pallas and Vesta are known as the largest asteroids in the asteroid belt. All of these definitions, by the way, are pretty fuzzy. So take that with a grain of asteroid. Asteroids mostly live in the asteroid belt, which still really weirdly does not have a name. It's just the asteroid belt or the main belt. And that's between Mars and Jupiter, like I said earlier. It's the largest collection of asteroids in our solar system. There's estimated to be 1.1 to 1.9 million asteroids larger than one kilometer. Millions or billions of others that are smaller than that. Overall, there might be trillions of asteroids floating around out there. The inner solar system has the asteroid belt and the outside of the solar system has the Kuiper belt. The Kuiper belt is made of leftover fragments that have been pulled apart by Neptune's gravity, just like the asteroid belt had been pulled apart by Jupiter's gravity. And this explains why Neptune is our last planet. Sorry, Pluto. Asteroids are also found just kind of wandering around. Trojan asteroids orbit the sun alongside planets. They're always in step with the planet, either in front or behind them. The two will never collide. There are near-Earth asteroids, those which orbit close to the Earth. As of 2013, NASA reported over 10,000 near-Earth asteroids, with 1,409 being potentially dangerous and 861 being over a kilometer in diameter. Asteroids got out there with the same way we did. Asteroids formed from space dust and gas left over from the Big Bang. Four and a half billion years ago, gas and dust coalesced into the new star that we would call the sun. The dust gathered, making larger and larger rocks and clumps that eventually became planets like our own, but some never achieved the level to make a planet. Some were just tiny chunks and little pieces. The gravitational pull of planets maybe pulled those chunks into themselves or just left them orbiting out there. It was once thought that asteroids were shrapnel from a planet that exploded a long time ago. But this is because asteroids today are mainly found between Mars and Jupiter, where many people think a planet was or should be. The Titus Bode Law says there should be a planet between Mars and Jupiter. The Titus Bode Law looks at the mass and the radius of the sun and how many planets there are and the mass of all those planets, and they can figure out exactly where they should be orbiting. There should be a planet in between Mars and Jupiter in terms of that mathematical equation, but Jupiter's gravity was so large and exerts so much effort on our solar system that as those asteroids started to coalesce, Jupiter's gravity pulled them apart. So no planet ever formed there. 
even though there is something called the exploded planet hypothesis. It just can't be true. There's not enough mass in the whole asteroid belt to form a planet. Instead, it would be like smaller than our moon if it were able to form. You can watch a whole video about this over on D News. Some parts of the asteroid belt are planetesimals or tiny little chunks that you know, are big in comparison to what you might expect, but tiny in comparison to planets. And this is why there's such a large asteroid belt there between Mars and Jupiter. Uh, asteroids in the belt, both the inner belt and the Kuiper belt, are made mostly of rock, but they do contain other stuff. They have different classifications that astronomers have put upon them. There's the C-type asteroids, which are carbonaceous. 75% of all asteroids are carbonaceous. They're mostly clay and silicate rocks, and those are the furthest from the sun, way out there. There are also S-type asteroids, silicious asteroids. They're made primarily of stone and metals, like nickel and iron, and they live in the inner part of the asteroid belt. Then there's the M-type, or metallic asteroids. Those are mostly made of nickel and iron, but they also have more expensive metals like platinum and gold, and those live in the middle part of the asteroid belt. Some asteroids are even thought to have water or ice at their core. The thing is, these asteroids, they're big. And when they leave the asteroid belt or get thrown away by gravity or an impact, they could head for us. And a big one could destroy all of the life on this planet pretty easily. It's been done before, and it's been done again. It's just a matter of time. But how dangerous are they? And what would we do if one had us in their sights? Come back tomorrow and find out on Test Tube Plus. You can subscribe so you get all five of our episodes on asteroids and asteroid mining. I'm Trace. Let us know down in the comments what you think about all these asteroids and things. And if you knew that a meteor wasn't a real thing, it's just a flash of light because I didn't know that. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Trace.